Good evening, brothers and sisters, comrades all. And uh, for, you know, allow me to let us reduce everybody to brothers and sisters and comrades for this historic occasion. And I want to begin by saying to my Barbadian compatriots here this evening, just imagine that in this bicentenary year of the historic Bussa Rebellion, that the only organization in the whole of Barbados that is naming something in honor of our first national hero in his bicentenary year is the Embassy of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. That says something about the government and people of Venezuela. I guess it's not surprising because if you go to Caracas, there's a major thoroughfare in Caracas. And um, right along that thoroughfare are statues to many of the heroes, not of Venezuela, of Argentina and Colombia and Brazil and Cuba. And you go to several of the important um, government offices in Venezuela, and you see on the walls portraits of heroes and heroines from countries all across the Americas. And that is what a revolutionary country is all about. And I, I really hope that um, this message sinks home in Barbados, because really and truly, the truth is we haven't done justice to as important an anniversary as a bicentenary. This is, not a, this is not any normal anniversary. This is 200 years. 200 year anniversary of the most pivotal seminal event in the entire history of Barbados. Brothers and sisters, you know, there's a, there's a belief that a nation tends to be born out of either a blood sacrifice or some towering example of moral courage. There tends to be some um, profound event that gives birth. It's, it's, like, it's like a woman giving birth to a child. There, there tends to be that, that, um, that period of labor where the mother is in pain, uh, the mother sheds her blood, and out of that experience of great effort, great pain, great love, great commitment to the task of giving birth to that child, the child emerges. And, it's, and so it is with nations. If, if Venezuela looks back at how the nation was born, they go back to Simon Bolivar and the wars of independence and the great sacrifice made. If France looks, looks back, it goes back to a little peasant girl called Joan of Arc who made a sacrifice for the entire nation or to the French Revolution. And most nations, they look back to some seminal event where um, some national made a tremendous sacrifice that inspired future generations and put in train an emancipatory and nation-building process. And for us in Barbados, that can only be the Bussa Rebellion. The Bussa Rebellion put in train the fundamental emancipatory and nation-building process of Barbados. And I would like to spend some time trying to get us to understand exactly what that Bussa rebellion was about. Because we just glibly say Bussa. That there, oh, there was a slave rebellion in 1816 and there was a, a General Bussa and there was Nanny Gregg. And we don't fully grasp at a deep emotional level the kind of sacrifice that was made. 
First of all, Rodney was right. The Bossa Rebellion was a well-organized enterprise. It was planned over a considerable period of time. There were leaders on several plantations all across St. Philip, Christ Church, St. John, St. George, that meticulously planned the rebellion. Quite often they would meet um, sometimes at dances, at, at funerals, on the occasions when enslaved people were, were permitted to travel out of their plantation. They would meet and the leaders would plan. And the leaders tended to be the, the leadership of the slaves on particular plantations. So for example, Bussa was the ranger on Bailey's plantation. The ranger was the, 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 en the elite enslaved person who had responsibility for the boundaries of the plantation and therefore had certain privileges of traveling. Um, in Simmons' plantation, it was Jackie, the driver, who had responsibility for the disciplining of the slave laboring class on the plantation. And so it was the, the leadership, the slave leadership on the different plantations that came together and meticulously planned, um, planned this revolt. And mind you, you know, Rodney explained what they were up against. But I would like to add a little bit to what he said. Barbados was the quintessential slave plantation society. Hilary Beckles is fond of explaining that it was the first society in human history that was constructed totally and exclusively as a slave, as a slave society. There was no indigenous population. It began, Barbados began its life as an English slave colony set up to exploit human labor um, to produce for a slave owning a slave owning class. And not only was it a slave, the quintessential slave society, but they almost virtually the entire physical space of Barbados was cultivated in the form of slave plantations. No mountains to run to. The white slave owning class in Barbados was extremely well organized. There were local militias, the, the white the white Barbadians were organized into military, civil military forces. So there were parish militias right across the island. So the, the local whites were armed um, to defend against um, the enslaved class. In addition to that, Barbados was the center of the British imperial forces in the Southern Caribbean. Barbados was the center for the Southern Caribbean, Jamaica for the Northern Caribbean. So in Barbados was the St. Anne's garrison at which were stationed the British Imperial forces, including soldiers of the British, the, the black British West Indian Regiment. These were, um, uh, this was a regiment made up of African people Many of them taken off of slave ships. Many of them purchased by the British Army as slaves and given a kind, a sort of freedom. They were enlisted as soldiers in a very racist army. And, you know, they, so their choice was between slavery or a peculiar type of freedom where they served as British soldiers and served to put down slave rebellions in the Caribbean and to assist the British Army. They were sailed across the, the Atlantic periodically to assist the British Army to colonize West Africa. And they were stationed right here at the garrison. So this is what Bussa and Jackie and Nanny Gregg and the other rebels were up against. Now the rebellion started on Easter Sunday, the 14th, of April 1816. And there was a tradition within the, sl the slave culture of Barbados that Easter was the spiritually most appropriate time to launch an, a liberatory enterprise. That Easter, that Easter with its symbolism of resurrection was spiritually 
the appropriate time for this kind of enterprise. Hence, the Bussa Rebellion begins on Easter Sunday. Um, in 1816, the Confederation riots begin on Easter Sunday in, in 1876. So it begins on Easter, on Easter Sunday. And um, the climatic battle takes place two days later, on the 16th of April, at Bailey's Plantation and at Golden Grove Plantation. And it is in that climatic battle that General Busser is killed. The thing about that battle is that it was fought primarily by the black soldiers of the British West Indian Regiment. In fact, one of the ironies of the Busser, of, of, our, of, of the Busser Rebellion is that the, 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 the soldiers who were most responsible for defeating the rebel army were actually, not the white militia, were actually the black soldiers of the Busser Rebellion, of, of, the, of the British West Indian Regiment. But after the black, these professional soldiers had basically broke the back of the rebellion. And, you know, there was a feeling, um, it, it is said by some historians, that the rebels felt that the black soldiers would not fight them. And this, this could have led to some complacency on their part, because they, were, they had this, there was this sense that, um, that Britain, that the British government was somehow leaning towards emancipation of the slaves, and that it was the, the local, the Barbadian white slave owning class that was defying the British government, and there was a feeling on the part of the slaves that these black British soldiers would not engage them in battle. Of course, they were wrong. Um, these were professional soldiers, and they, they fought them, even though they were their brothers. They did the bulk of the fighting. But the horror, the real horror of the Bussa Rebellion took place afterwards. After the rebel army had been defeated, the white militia went on a, a horrific rampage of revenge and retribution. They, they hunted down the remaining slave bands. They executed hundreds. They burnt the homes, the houses of the enslaved blacks. They went on a rampage across the island. They executed men, women, and children. They took executed slaves, they cut off their heads, they put the heads on poles and displayed them on plantations and in areas all across Barbados. According to the official records put together by the Barbados House of Assembly, they claim, they claim that 50 rebels were killed in battle, that seven, 70 were executed in the field, that 144 were executed after some form of court-martial trial. However, these were official figures. However, in, 18, in the said 1816, uh, an anonymous writer in Barbados wrote a document, produced a document which maintained that the official figures were grossly underreported and that the reality was that close to 1,000 blacks were killed, either in battle or executed. Um, Professor Beckles, in his, um, in his works, he tends to accept the position of that author, because if you look at the testimony, and after the, re after the rebellion, the, there was a, a commission of inquiry. If you look at the testimony of some of the militia leaders, one militia leader, for example, um, speaks of killing 40, over 40 rebels in one battle. So 
it is quite likely that that figure of close to 1,000 is the correct figure. And we know that in these situations, mm -hmm. officialdom tends to underrepresent um, the level of barbarity inflicted. And so we, we need to understand this. We need to understand the enormity of the, of the sacrifice. We need to understand the degree to which blood flowed. We need to understand the degree to which men, our ancestors, men, women, and children were subjected to that kind of terror. And, um, but as Rodney said, as the ambassador said, that Bussa rebellion was extremely important because it set in train an emancipatory process. And you know, when we look at the broad sweep of Barbadian history, when we look at the roles played by the Clement Paines, the Grantley Adamses, the Errol Barrows, we all have to concede that whatever struggles they engaged in, whatever sacrifices they made to take forward our people's struggle for liberation and for a nation, that those struggles and sacrifices pale in comparison with the sacrifices and struggles of the generation of General Bassa and his freedom fighters. And I want, to, and it is important that we, that we acknowledge them. We speak of Bassa, we speak of Nanny Craig, but I want to identify some 23 heroes. And I want to call their names, I want to call their plantations they were associated with. These are our ancestors. These were living, breathing, feeling men and women. These were fathers. These were mothers. Jackie, the driver at um, Simmons Plantation, one of the one of the witnesses in the Commission of Inquiry, Robert, Robert, made it known that he used to go and visit Jackie's home on the plantation because he was friendly with Jackie's children and he would go to play with Jackie's children. So these are, these are not just names. These are living feeling, sentient human beings. Place General Bassa, the ranger of the plantation. These are all leaders in the rebellion. King Wiltshire, the carpenter of the plantation. Dick Bailey, the mason on the plantation. Johnny Cooper, the cooper. And Johnny, the standard bearer of the rebel army. This is the man who, who carried the flag of the rebel army into battle. On Simmons Plantation, Jackie, the driver, John, the ranger of the plantation, and Nanny Greg, that formidable Bajan woman, that domestic slave who could read and who would read the newspapers and would come back and report to her enslaved brothers and sisters. And she would tell them that, look, our brothers and sisters got their freedom in San Doming, Haiti, by fighting. And we have to fight too. And we have to do like they did in Haiti. We have to burn down these plantations. We have to use fire. And she said she, she actually agitated with her fellow enslaved not to work. She said, you know, freedom belongs to us. And we, 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 should, we should withdraw our labor. And she <laughs> was going to withdraw her labor. And um, Nanny Greg, and I'm so pleased to hear that we're going to have a Nanny Greg ro room as well. Congo Road Plantation, William Green and Thomas. We don't know what their 
um, jobs were. Sunbury Plantation, the leader was King William. The Chapel Plantation, the leader was a man called Toby. Grove Plantation, the leader was a man called Prince William. Sanford Estate, the leader was Charles. Bide Mill Plantation, Mingo, the range of the plantation. Adventure Plantation, Little Sambo. Haynesfield Plantation, Jack Groom. Sturgis Plantation, William. Fisher Pond Plantation, Sandy Waterman. And as you can see here from those names, the St. Philip, Christchurch, St. Thomas, St. John. The rebellion engulfed half of the island. And in, in addition to the enslaved blacks or Africans on the plantations of Barbados, there were a number of revolutionaries drawn from the free colored community. There was Roach, there was Cain Davis, Cain Davis who indicated, who urged the slaves to fight and said he would be fighting for them because he too had children who were slaves. There was John Richard Sargent, and there was Joseph Pitt Washington Franklin. And so it is not only Bussa, as important as Bussa was, it is a whole roster of our ancestors, all of whom made that ultimate sacrifice for us. Some of them would have been hung. Many of them would have been drawn and quartered. They would have been beheaded. And, um, but they made that sacrifice for us. And it is because of them that we have a nation today. And you know, I, you know who, 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 who made this, who brought this home to me forcibly? None other than Fidel Castro. I, you, you will recall in, on the 1st of August, Emancipation Day, 1998, we had the privilege of having Fidel Castro speak at our emancipation ceremony just under the Bassa statue. And I had the good fortune to share that public platform with Fidel, that brilliant emancipation morning. And Fidel, I met Fidel later on that evening at Government House. And he wanted to know all about Bassa. He, he pigeonholed me and all of the information about Bassa. And then he said to me, you know, it is these heroes like, heroes like Bassa are the most important heroes and role models for our nations, even more important than our anti-colonial fighters. He said, even more important than the, than the Jose Martis. And he explained to me, he said, why he says so, because in the future, the greatest battle that we are going to have to fight with our enemy is the battle of ideas. And in that battle, the most potent, the most powerful ideas and ideals that we will have at our disposal are the ideas and ideals that were championed by these men and women who gave their lives to, to destroy the evil institution of human slavery. In other words, the battle to destroy slavery, to destroy that institution of human degradation, as far as Fidel was concerned, <laughs> um, transcended anything else, including um, the, the ideals uh, that underpin the anti-colonial pro independence struggles. And he said to me that it is the buses that we are going to have to look to, to hold up to, to, to be inspired by as our role models in the, in the years ahead. And I think, I think Fidel was so right. I think that um, that, that Bussa rebellion is, is really the founding head of our nation here in Barbados. And I, I think that um, if we are really serious about, Rodney said that we have had 50 years of a relatively superficial independence. I, I understand what 
Rodney means. We have, we have been independent for 50 years, but we, we are more post-colonial than truly independent. Post-colonial in the sense that we are self-governing now. We have been self-governing for the last 50 years, but still subjected to a colonial heritage, a colonial mentality that we still have not totally freed ourselves from. And I think that in this 50th year of our formal independence, we need to understand that we need to decolonize at a much more profound level than we have done thus far. Yes, we have decolonized, but at a relatively surface or superficial level. We must now resolve to dig deep. We have to dig deep. If we are going to be the serious, rooted nation and people that we ought to be, if we are going to live up to the sacrifices, if we are going to live up to and honor the sacrifices and the dreams that that revolutionary generation of 1816 had for us. Because let us be clear about this. They would have known or at least seriously suspected that they were going to die. They were up against the, 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 the imperial army of Britain. They would have known that they were, they were going to die. But they were willing to make that sacrifice because they were determined that their children and grandchildren would live in a different kind of Barbados, that their children and grandchildren and generations of black people down the road would live in a Barbados in which they could appropriate their full human dignity and take their rightful place in this country. And if we are to become that kind of people, that kind of nation, we are going to have to dig a lot deeper than we have dug so far. We are going to have to root ourselves in that revolutionary sacrifice, that revolutionary ethos of 1816. We are going to have to be much more serious about identifying exactly who we are as a Barbadian people, where our roots are, what are we a part of. And, um, and in that exercise, there can be no greater lodestone than that seminal Bussa Rebellion of 1816. So I just want to, once, I want to end once again by thanking the Venezuelan embassy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for so honoring us, the people of Barbados, by directing our attention to something that is so fundamental and so critical to us as a people and a nation by dedicating this room to our great General Bassa. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>